Farewell, Alexandria and the arid coasts of northern Egypt. We are going after a boat which nearly never stops. On the helicopter, which carries part of the crew of the Geo Challenger, there is one of the managers of this floating factory, Bruno de Verre. We can soon see long trails in the wake of the boat. Just like a giant trawler, the Geo Challenger tows a dozen cables packed with high-tech equipment. It is nicknamed the Sea Ultrasonograph. We can stay out here for years. Uh... And the closest uh, equivalent would be a nuclear submarine that stays submerged for three months, while we stay out here for 18 months. So I would say, operationally speaking and on a technical level, we are probably amongst the most technically advanced vessels and operationally, operationally speaking as well in the world, yes. It's unique. On your right, you can see the Geo Challenger. We're overtaking it, the pilots maneuvering so that we can land on the platform. Several times a year, Bruno de Verre leaves the offices of the General Geophysics Company in Paris to board the Geo Challenger in order to catch up on the operations in progress. Hello, Captain. How are you? Fine. The oil magnates who sponsor this new seismic exploration are convinced that there is oil somewhere off Alexandria. But right now, all the information regarding the boating area is strictly confidential. Yeah. We're especially concentrating on these zones. We're going to scrape this zone and do a complete scan of the area. We'll then give the results to the oil company, who with its geologists and geophysicists will direct the drilling according to the results. As far as we're concerned, our priority is the quality of the data that is given to the client, which will enable him to have the most accurate picture of the subsoil and therefore decide to drill or not according to the zone. In order to understand the mission of this unique ship, let's go to the stern of the boat with Jan, the seismic operations manager on the Geo Challenger. The seismic uh, theory is, is quite easy to understand, actually. Uh, if, you, if you have a, uh, a wife or a girlfriend that's pregnant, they will uh, go to the doctor and get an ultrasound of their stomach and you can actually see the baby. And uh, in this case here, well, it's, uh, it's just multiplied by a million. So um, whereas the, uh, the baby is only 20 centimeters inside the woman here, we are looking uh, at 20 kilometers of depth into the, uh, into the ground, into the structures below us. And we are trying to, to locate the, uh, the oil and gas so that uh, eventually we'll be able to tank our cars and drive uh, around Champs-Élysées. The function of a seismic ship is to record a sound wave propagated by a number of air cannons. The echoes of these underwater explosions are then captured by tiny microphones, fitted in cables which are a few kilometers long. All the data collected in the sea is then processed on the boat in order to provide a perfect picture of the subsoil. And in certain cases, it reveals some precious information on the nature of the seabed for those who are able to interpret it.
For the past few months, on each seismic ship, there has been a solitary crew member. He's a sort of watch hired by the oilman, as underwater explosions generated by this kind of ship can be dangerous for the wildlife around it, and especially for sea mammals. My job aboard is to, to be sure that there are no animals around before the start of the games and to implement the guidelines to minimize the acoustical disturbance from the seismic survey. If, uh, if I detect an animal in the 30 minutes before the start of the games, I must delay the, the soft start for at least 20 minutes since animals leave the area. So it's the only occasion when I can stop. Or in the case of turtles, I can ask them to stop for six shots to give them time to be on, on a safe zone. On the Geo Challenger, there are 45 crew members and a dozen different nationalities who take turns night and day. Nicola is part of the team of young scientists. He is from Wesson Island. He spends five weeks on board and five weeks at home. Usually, people say things like, you earn a lot of cash. It's often the first thing they ask me. And then they say, you earn a lot of cash. But they don't really care about my job. In Wesson, there are a lot of merchant sailors, so they don't really ask people, what's your job? If you're a sailor, you're a sailor, period. But I'm not a sailor, I'm a scientist. Because in Wesson, a lot of people think, he's a sailor, but he didn't go to marine school. It's not normal. So I'm just a scientist on a boat, and that's it. That's it. But sometimes, at the stern of the ship, the cables get tangled or even break. They must then find where the problem is coming from in this extremely long device. The production comes to a standstill, and the ambiance gets very tense. Each hour that goes by means millions of dollars and even perhaps a contract thrown into the sea. So you know, yeah, for information that, um... We're pulling along several million dollars worth of equipment in the water on a device that's a kilometer wide by six or seven kilometers long. It's like a giant rake which trails along, so there is obviously a risk of it getting caught by fishing nets or any floating object, even a boat. These are the biggest threats. That's why we have some kind of visual support all around us, just like the one you can see at the bottom. These boats work for us. They sail around the ship. They watch everything and are in permanent contact with the bridge in order to move away from our device and therefore avoid breaking the cables we pull along, the streamers in which are placed the hydrophones. They prevent us from ruining our equipment. Nicolas, the scientist from Wesson, is in charge of the operations on the work deck. He knows that he cannot make the slightest mistake. All the cables are in full tension here. There is a lot of tension on the paravanes on both sides. It can easily reach 30 or 35 tons when there is a bit of wind or when there are waves. Everything can be dangerous, actually. If you aren't careful, somebody can fall into the water. There have already been some accidents. For example, a major accident would be to have a finger cut off or to break a bone if you're not really paying attention to everything. They will need three days and three nights to pull these never-ending cables up. They have to pull everything back on board, check everything and repair the broken part in order to put the device and the air cannons back into the water. After 72 hours of hard work, the crew can finally relax. At the canteen, the captain and the skippers are finally beginning to smile again. I'm 
100 francs sure that we haven't found uh, half of it yet. Uh, and you can see the, uh, that the industry, they are believing also that uh, we should have uh, seismic in uh, uh, many years to come. They are building vessels like never before. And we are shooting now uh, uh, same, in the same area as we did uh, 20 years ago. Uh, because there is new technology and uh, you get the better data and you are more safe that uh, once you get the platform to drill that, that you will find something. We try to reassure ourselves as best we can on the future of this job. In spite of the predicted shortage of oil and the price of oil, which is skyrocketing in New York. For the crew on watch, it's time for a last check in the sea to make sure everything has gone back to normal and that the firing can start again. With an underwater camera, the mechanics of the Geo Challenger weave dangerously between the submerged cables in search of a defect. After a meticulous inspection of each cable, the seismic exploration can start again. But from the moment that they decide, yes, we're going to, to go and drill a, drill a, drill a hole and, and find oil and gas, until you're able to actually tank it in your car. Uh, well, the price is maybe $10 billion and uh, it takes up to 10 years. From the very first decision of, yes, we are going to look for oil and gas in this area, until you're able to, to put it in your car, uh, it can take up to 10 years and $10 billion is, is probably a, a cost that's not too far off. The seismic crews went back to normal again a few hours ago. The powerful computers have taken over from the men. The pressure is therefore not as strong on the Geo Challenger. What are the scientists on this ship thinking about? Probably about their next night on the Champs-Élysées thanks to Egyptian oil.